Hey there, happy day 997 of What You Up To Now. Sharon Hornell's room here, documenting and sharing the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of America to the online world. I uh, spent over a quarter century in corporate America, primarily in the, the quality function, which <clears throat> I, of course, like because I got to stick my nose in everybody's business. Because quality, as I defined it, and as an executive, I got to define it that way, was the processes, the systems, the procedures, everybody does in every department to ensure that we satisfy our customers not only satisfy but delight that they have a great experience so it ties into everything that everybody in every department does because not only do we deal and we have the end customers to keep in mind but we have our interdepartmental customers to keep in mind as well so if i am in the purchasing department i serve and my customers are all the other departments in the organization that i do purchasing functions for so quality was right up my alley absolutely loved it had a great time with it also inherited the sanitation function in a big uh hundreds of millions of dollar industrial bakery which was uh, a, a huge learning experience I, I actually ended up loving it was not thrilled not gonna lie was not thrilled when i inherited that that function in that department but it got me the opportunity to play with and apply the quality principles that I wanted everyone else in the organization to be applying in their department in a specific function and area and a department. So it was a great learning experience for me as well. Um, even though the smell of fruit fly maggots will absolutely positively make me hurl. It's the only time I had to run to the bathroom <laughs> at that job and, and uh, actually got sick was from that smell and that smell still stays with me cannot tolerate it i can i can sense it a, like a mile away and i just head the other direction so corporate america primarily quality manufacturing and quality i work for manufacturing companies and in the quality function primarily um, throughout my corporate career on the side i've been involved in a really diverse array of businesses and industries which has been really fun from real estate to actually did a stint in network marketing to uh rodeos entertainment uh it, comedy all kinds of fun things so fireworks retail things and retail products so lots of in actually games all kinds of things like i've probably forgotten more businesses than i actually uh, remember when i'm talking about them but in this segment since i've gone online you know a few years ago i got divorced and it gave me the opportunity i was old enough to not want to go work for someone else or, or start a new offline business, but I'd always been curious about the online world. And I thought, well, here's my opportunity. The kids are grown. I can, can be curious about this. I can explore it and I can check it out. And so I thought as long as I'm doing it, I might as well share what I'm learning and document my journey uh, via the internet, right? So it's kind of like a running discussion about what's working, what's not, what I'm working on. And right now I'm I'm big into challenges. I've been doing challenges my entire career. You know, back in the olden days, I was doing challenges before there was the internet, before there was media where we could share challenges. And then as the internet became available, I used to do them on my blog. I had a blog where I did a lot of stress challenges because back in the day, I was running businesses, raising kids, and um, working in corporate America. And it was pretty stressful, not gonna lie. It was very stressful <clears throat> and I think I slept an average of like four hours a night two to four hours a night was about as much sleep as I got through through you know my 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 late 20s my 30s and most of my 40s so not exactly the the model lifestyle and the model that I would I would tell other people to follow it yep we always believe or some of us believe we can do it all but uh, there's a limit for each of us and each and every one of us and it's more of a setting priorities limit and and setting priorities then it is about trying to do it all and have it all but i didn't know that at the time so today get up and go challenge day 21 of our 30 plus day challenge like i said i'm into challenges and i've done during COVID. i especially thought it was important to share information and and, and do what i could do to help people and so i've been doing a get up and go challenge I think I did it once as like a 10 day and I thought, ah, that's not enough. Let's do 30 days. And as the pandemic stretched out and stretched out and people's lives had been hugely impacted, 30 days didn't feel overwhelming. And so this will actually, this is actually the 21st day of the fourth 30 plus day challenge that we've done called get up and go challenge. Uh, and we talk about the seven key areas of our life when we go into um, what is a framework that you can use to guarantee that you're always improving in each of these different areas of our life? 
when we talk about that in the challenge so that you can guarantee you're going to get better results after any change or challenge than before you went into it. You personally will. It doesn't mean everybody in the planet will be better off, but you are concerned about making sure that you're better off and that the people you love and care about are better off. And better off is, of course, subjective and defined by you. Uh, so today was about, it was, we're in between, I teach something called a SOAP framework. The SOAP framework, <clears throat> which seemed very fitting during COVID. So that's why I call it the SOAP. I've been using the same process, the same framework on myself for decades, but <clears throat> I never really named it before. I just did it and I installed the process in my subconscious. So I don't really even have to think about it consciously anymore. I had to actually think about the process. What do I do? Step one, step two, step three, step four. When I'm faced with a change, when I'm faced with a challenge, when I'm faced with an obstacle, when I'm faced with a roadblock, when I when somebody tells me I can't do something, first thing I do is I run into my soap framework and I roll through it and I'm like, you know, you know just watch me because if, if you tell me I can't do something, that is pretty much a guarantee that it will be done. So today was, we're heading into another round of the soap framework. I like to go through it in the challenges now. It's the fourth one. So I'm figuring out the pieces that I like and really are effective for people. And so I go through all four steps, one SOAP, one a day on three big areas of our life, financial relationships and physical, because those are the ones that people struggle with the most whenever there's a change or a challenge. And then I spend one day and I go through all of the other four areas of our life, just the framework quickly and just give an example or two that help people understand, okay, mental, emotional, spiritual, and contribution. How could I do this same thing and apply that to those areas and aspects of my life? Uh, <clears throat> and how did I pick those? The big, the, I call the big three finances, health, and relationships because health, wealth, and relationships are the big three concerns of almost all human beings. Uh, so today we talked about something that I've learned so much from, and I'm sure I've talked about it. And I'm sure there's a video that I've done up in the get up and go challenge. Facebook private group. I'm sure that you can sort through the units and find that the primary question. If I haven't, I will do one. But today I talked almost, I guess, 18 plus minutes about mostly the primary question and how we all have one that we operate on. Just like we all have beliefs that we automatically operate on. We have an overriding primary question that we might ask ourselves a thousand times a day as we're going about our business and about our life to evaluate what's going on. And I shared that mine was WTF and that that was a primary question that actually almost put me in my grave. So we talked about that today on the Get Up and Go Challenge. Then the fun challenge today was about, I'm having a blank. I'm having a blank about what the fun challenge was about. But today was day 287 of the Do One Fun Thing Every Day Challenge. And I'm actually using, dip my head down, a little journal book called Do One Fun Thing Every Day as a guide to do one fun thing every day. And actually, I started this with, <clears throat> a couple years ago, the little journal book Do One Thing Every Day That Scares You to increase and stretch my comfort zone. Now, I had had this book for a couple of years. I actually got it for a friend of mine and I when we were in a network marketing business because she was afraid, and I guess I probably was too. Oh, here's my parents. Uh, of uh, doing some of the things that they were teaching us to do in that network marketing, network marketing company, which it turns out were ridiculous, old-fashioned ways of doing things anyway. So shame on the company, shame on us for trying to do them. But we were scared to do it. So I bought us each this book when I was up at the cabin one weekend. And I thought, oh, we could do this together. Every day we'll go through it and we'll do something that scares us. And uh, I think I started it once or twice, did a few days, and then never finished it. Sat on my bookshelf forever and ever and ever. And then as I was scared to get online and do live videos, which, you know, like everybody else, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do them, never going to do them. And I think I resisted for about eight months, maybe a little longer, before I got enough pressure and I knew I needed to do them. But enough pressure from people that are super duper successful and are were achieving at the time what I wanted to do. And so they were all on live video. So I knew I was going to have to start doing live video. So in order to get myself to do that, I gave myself a 365 day challenge to do one thing every day that stretched my comfort zone and scared me. So that's what I did. Every day I popped up. If it was a sayings day, whatever it was, I went through, shared that. And then I did the homework. I did the what it challenge was right along with people and then shared what I was learning about it. 
you know, what I was scared of, what was working, what wasn't. Um, and then actually, even in the end, I, I, here's the 14 lessons that I learned from doing this challenge. And then it was kind of fun and I kind of liked doing it. It gave me something to warm my voice up and talk about. So then the next year I did, I've got a unicorn sticker from my granddaughter on here. Do one thing every day that makes you happy. And I, I want to be happier. I want to be happier. I was, you know, getting divorced, separating out all the businesses and the assets still. And I wanted to feel happier. So I did that for a year. Then this year, which is so fortuitous, given the crazy year that we're having, I decided I would do one fun thing every day. And we're going through this book. Now, one of the funny things about this is my vision's bad, right? I use a magnifying glass and big screen TVs and, and different tools and things for everything. And I didn't know that this book is actually for ages six to nine. So it's been a little bit of a different twist. There's only some of the references, just a lot of the quotes and things are for younger people, which has been perfect during COVID because I spent from April to August with my four then five-year-old granddaughter and she started school this fall. She started kindergarten this fall, but it gave us a little fun something to do or something fun to look forward to every day. Not that we don't think of a whole lot of fun things to do, but it just gave us another perspective and another way to think of something fun to do every day. I guess I could look up what today's fun challenge was now that I said that. So today it's about, oh, it's about feeling rich and, and counting our blessings that aren't money, right? So often we feel like, oh, I'm broke. I don't have any money. But then we forget about all the people that we love and care about and all the people that love and care about us. So that was today's fun challenge. Uh, supersize your business was about being hot under the collar, things that upset us. And of course, I don't have any trouble talking about the things that upset me and that bother me. So I shared that on my profile and in the supersize your business page with my business owners. How do you apply that to your business? How do you use being upset about something or your customers being upset about something to grow and build and, and, and make your business better and, and attract the people you want to repel those you don't want, but also to help build your business and help grow your business. So those are the things I'm working on today. Also doing a couple personal projects on the side because I'm always growing and developing and doing personal things. I think I mentioned yesterday, I'm trying out a new planner. I'm using a new planner. And when I say try, I mean different than people say, I'm going to try this. And then if it gives me a hard time, I'm not going to do it. I don't just try things. I dive in with both feet, work them to the max, try to break them and try to figure out, well, what's broken about this or what do I need to do with this to make it actually work better for me? And so I'm in the process of trying to break a new planning system. <laughs> it's an interesting perspective, right? So that's it. That's all I've got today. Go out, make it an awesome day. Any questions, anything I could help you with, any comments, concerns that you might think I have a perspective on, just ask. I don't always say that, but just ask. I mean, so often people don't ask. I know I personally, one of my biggest challenges personally is to ask. Ask questions, ask for help. Why? I, I broke that baby down. I found it because I don't want to be stupid. I don't want to feel stupid. I don't want to look stupid. And that's limiting beliefs that came from my early childhood, early grade school, like before I was seven. And <clears throat> I don't want to feel stupid. And so I don't ask questions. I don't ask for help. Okay. A lot of the time we figure stuff out. Some of us are self-starters and motivated internally and we just figure stuff out. But sometimes it's bad because we struggle with things that we don't need to struggle with. I used to really struggle with technological things. And I would, I, I don't know why, but I wouldn't ask the question. And I was doing a, um, a certification program for ClickFunnels organization. And I would wait like a week before I'd ask a question or two weeks. And as soon as I typed the question into the question, you know, our group, we had a private group. Even before anyone could answer, the answer would pop into my head. That happened like three times. And finally then when I started to have questions, instead of struggling with it for days or even weeks, I just asked the question because as soon as I asked the question, I, I would come up, people would help and give me answers that I might have not thought of, but I also would, would, would know that I already knew the answer. I was just blocking myself from having it for whatever reason. So ask, feel free to ask. I might not know the answer, but I do know how to find somebody that does. All right, have an awesome day. And I will, of course, be with you tomorrow with day 998 of what you have to know. I might have to think of something fun to do on day 1000. I think that's going to be, what's it, 98, 99, Saturday. I think it's going to be Saturday. Maybe I'll do something fun. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.